This lesson deals with supplemental problem 7.2. You can find this problem in the ECE 201 ebook in the chapter 7 supplemental problem starting on page 3. Given this one capacitor circuit with a single pole double throw switch, can you find the voltage across and the current through the capacitor? In the chapter 7 notes we had an algorithm for solving one capacitor circuits, so let's use that. Step 1 is to formulate the equations. Since I have a one capacitor circuit, I have a first order differential equation. And the form of the solution for any voltage or any current is a plus b times e to the minus t over tau. So we'll do the same thing here for our two equations using a subscript 1 and 2. Tau will be the same for any voltage or any current that we solve for. The second step in our algorithm is to find the pre-switching conditions. Now the assumption here is that the switch has been in this state for a long time. The capacitor has reached steady state, so it looks like an open circuit. And then we're going to solve for the variables of interest. Obviously the current here is going to be zero because it's an open circuit. But the voltage across the capacitor is the same as the voltage across the 24 ohm resistor. So I've got a voltage divider of 24 ohms with 16 ohms and 12 volts. And that turns out to be 7.2. Step 3 is to find the initial conditions. That would be the capacitor voltage and the capacitor current just after we change state. Now the voltage across the capacitor just before we switched was 7.2 volts. It must still be that value. So that's going to be equal to a1 plus B1 times E to the 0 over tau, which is equal to 1 times B1. So I have one equation in these two unknowns. If there's 7.2 volts across here, then the current in this 24 ohm resistor would be 7.2 divided by 24, and that is equal to 0.3 amps. If this is 9 volts here, and this node right over here is the capacitor voltage, which is 7.2, then the voltage across this 8 ohm is 9 minus 7.2, and that's equal to 1.8. So the current that's flowing in here is 1.8 volts divided by 8 ohms, and that current enters a node and has to equal the current that leaves the node. That's my equation on the bottom here. So 0.225 amps is equal to 0.3 plus the current in the capacitor. Again, this is all at t equals 0 plus. So now I can solve for the capacitor current. That turns out to be minus 75 milliamps. And that's going to be our A2 plus B2 times e to the 0, and e to the 0 is 1. Our fourth step is to get a second equation in our unknown so we can solve for the A's and the B's in our circuit. We'll take a look then as T approaches infinity, or really five time constants. Switch is still in this position, change state of T equals zero, and now our capacitor has again reached steady state, so it's an open circuit. This is the voltage across the 24 ohm resistor, so it's going to be 24 ohms, voltage divided with 8, times 9, that turns out to be 6.75, and that's going to be A1 plus B1 times E to the minus infinity, which is just equal to A1. The current in the open circuit is just zero, so that's going to be equal to our value of A2 plus B2 times E to the minus infinity, or just A2. Find the thevenin resistance next. Set all the independent sources equal to zero. That's the short circuit for a voltage source. Our circuit is still in this switch position. It changed state at t equals zero. All you see is the 8 ohm in parallel with the 24. The 16 here is really disconnected. So product over sum turns out to be 6 ohms. The capacitor that was here was 0.33 microfarad, so multiplying that by 6, I get about 2 microseconds for the time constant. I can put it all together and find the solution. So for the capacitor voltage, we had that A1 plus B1 was 7.2, we had A1 was 6.75, so B1 then is equal to 7.2 minus 6.75, and that's 0.45. So our capacitor voltage then is A1 plus B1 e to the minus t over tau, 6.75, and then 450 millivolt times e to the minus t over 1.98 microseconds, and the units here would be volts. This is true for t greater than zero, but also through zero since this is a capacitor voltage and it can't jump instantaneously. If you evaluate this equation at t equals zero, you get the sum of these two, and that turns out to be 7.2 volts. And that was, of course, our value for t less than zero. For a capacitor current, we had that A2 plus B2 was minus 75 milliamps. A2 was zero, so B2 is minus 75. So the capacitor current is A2 plus B2 e to the minus t over tau, so minus 75 milli e to the minus t over 1.98 microseconds amps. You could put the milli here, you could put it over here. This is true for t greater than zero. For t less than zero, it was equal to zero. So there's a discontinuity as we pass through zero. And a capacitor current can jump instantaneously, but a capacitor voltage can't. Let's sketch the voltage result. For t less than zero, I just have 7.2 volts. And then for t greater than zero, I have this equation. But if you wait long enough, this term will drop out. You just have 6.75. So after five time constants, I'll be dropping down to a value of 6.75. You can make a rough sketch, just exponentially going from 7.2 to 6.75. 
and five times the 1.98 microseconds, almost 10 microseconds. So very easy to make a quick sketch. Now we found the capacitor current using our algorithm, but you could also find the capacitor current because you know the capacitor voltage. Our textbook likes to do this. I find this a lot easier, but let's just see if we get the same answer. So we're going to take the capacitance, which is 0.33 microfarads, and multiply it by the derivative of the capacitor voltage, which was 6.75 plus 0.5 e to the minus t over tau. Derivative of a constant is zero. Here's the 0.45, bring that out. And then the derivative of e to the ax is equal to a e to the ax. And a in this case is minus one over tau. So here's my minus sign. And then here's tau of 1.98 microseconds. And then here's our e to the ax again, which is just e to the minus t over tau. Evaluating on these three numbers, so the product of these two divided by this is a minus 75 milli, and then of course I got my time constant of 1.98 microseconds. I get exactly the same result I had over here. And this is supplemental problem 7.2.